I've been making video games since I was 13, but I recently realized I suck at level design. To try and get better, I challenge myself to make a level every day. The rules are simple, and by simple, I mean I made them up as I went along. I could use any tools I wanted, any engine I wanted. I just had to make a start to finish playable level every single day. So, how did they go? Was I able to make a level every day, or is this simply impossible? Gray boxing is an art in itself. There's something so satisfying about a beautifully laid out gray box level with its clean, simple textures and nothing to obscure the underlying design. My go-to workhorse for game development has been Unity. In Unity, I'm so preoccupied with making the functions of the game, the level designs end up being simple and uninteresting. I'll spend hours on mechanics and level design always seems to get put on the back burner. Once I have player abilities nailed down, then I can move on to level design. Once a few more enemies are in the game, then I can get started on gray boxing. Once I patch these annoying bugs, that's when the real development can start. These things are necessary. A game needs a strong foundation to build on. I just realized that my level design skills were deficient because I was mostly programming mechanics. To rid myself of the burden of creating original features, I decided to do some mapping for existing games. Making levels for Quake or Half-Life means no more programming or modeling or texturing. I can just focus on the pure act of level design. However, this meant I would have to learn some new tools. Enter Trench Broom. Trench Broom is a super underrated tool for level design. Its simplicity can't really be appreciated without taking a look at an alternative. If you want to map for an old game like Quake or Half-Life, you'll probably have to use an old tool. Let's take a look at Valve's Hammer Editor for comparison. Oh my. Trying to wade through this interface after growing up on Unity feels like trying to run in a nightmare. Everything feels sluggish and slow, and thinking about things that could go wrong just seems to manifest them into existence. Trench Broom, on the other hand, feels more like this. It's so simple. Draw in your geometry, scale it, rotate it, copy and cut, drag and drop in your player, health pickups and enemies. Making a door? Right click. Make it a door entity, and boom, everything just works. Save your map, compile it, get a bunch of errors, your map is dark, lighting isn't working, search the internet for help, change some settings, hard crash quake, switch to an external compiling GUI. Okay, yeah, it's not perfect, but compared to old tools like Hammer, Trench Broom is a breeze to use. It frees me up to stop worrying about the overall game development and hone level design. A lot of Trench Broom's ease of use comes down to a series of invaluable videos made by Dump Truck DS. If you have any interest in doing some classic level design for one of the Quake games, or a game running on the Quake engine, definitely check out his series on mapping for Quake. This is the first level I did this week, and I think it came together okay for, for what it is, for a first try. Um, it's really boring, it's just kind of two rooms, but I at least broke up the space a little bit. Um, the lighting isn't very good, it's not perfect, but at least I tried to do a little something, so I don't know, it's not a bad start. Yep, I made a level for Half-Life 2. It sucks. I don't like it. Um, I didn't spend enough time on this one. That's really just the issue. Um, it is technically completed, so, you know, I haven't failed the challenge yet. But, uh, yeah, this is not going to get a passing grade from me. See me after class. The Lighthouse. This is another one I ended up streaming. I think there's some improvement here. It's definitely not perfect. It's pretty ugly and pretty broken as well. But, um... Yeah, I think, you know, my brushwork improved. It's uh, definitely got a little more of a sense of, of place than previous maps. And 
um, there's you know the start of kind of the story and, and some actual level design going into it. Like you can kind of see the goal right from the start and tried to like, tried to frame it with the coastline and everything. So I don't know. That, that, there's some improvement going on here, even if very very slight improvement. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. Do the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together. Now, come on now, just like that. You may actually recognize the setting of this map. Um, the main goal of this one was just to learn more about making custom wads, uh, which is the uh, file that uh, Quake uses for textures. So I used a tool called Wally, which is like a super old tool for modding Quake um, to do textures, and brought in the textures from a plumbing video game from the 80s. Okay, this is the first one that I genuinely did not finish. Um, the idea was, it was gonna be, it's a cube level, you run around a cube. I don't know, it's kind of inspired by like, I think there's some levels like this in Mario Galaxy, so. I wanted to do something like that, but you can't really appreciate a cube in first person as much. So to make it so that you can see, you know, what kind of shape you're exploring, I would have you teleport to uh, battle arenas away from the cube, which you have to, you know, defeat all the enemies inside there, and then you get to teleport back to the, the next section, and it'll open a gate or whatever, and you move on in the level. And uh, I like this concept, I think it's really cool, I want to return to it at some point, but it was way too ambitious to try and do something like this in one day, plus I didn't have enough time on the day that I did it to uh, even do regular, regular maps, so yeah, fail, I uh, didn't complete the challenge. Oh no, I'm I'm fired, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is the last level that I made this week, and it's it's another level kinda like the lighthouse where I, I have this an idea that I want to explore of like going in and out of the water, moving along the side of, of a, like a coastline, or in this case this uh, dam and uh, uh, one day is not really enough time to explore it properly but I think you know you can see you know some progress at least in my, my learning um, there's no enemies it's just you run from the start to the end uh, so I don't know it's a atmospheric walking simulator We'll go with that but it is complete and you know the lighting isn't isn't too bad i feel like I, it's not great you know it's less than probably 15 minutes spent lighting it but you know for what it is i think it came together pretty well it's become clear that this exercise has limited usefulness building a level this quickly means not having time to test refine and polish it properly However, I don't think this is a worthless exercise, or that I've exhausted its personal usefulness. I'm going to keep making a level every day for a couple more weeks, and see if I can improve in the areas where I see the most weakness. If you want to see where my level design journey takes me, then please subscribe. This channel will be a place for exploring 3D art and game development, and I'm super excited to start working on my next ideas and projects. This has been a ton of fun so far, and I can't wait to see what's next.